you this evening. Uh, thank you, those on the platform. And if you have your Bible, Judges uh, chapter 4. Uh, there was a movie in 2017 called Wonder Woman. And of course, um, she originated in the mind in a comic book years ago. But this woman in, uh, trained in the Amazon to be an unconquerable warrior. Uh, there's a plane crash. She leaves her home, joins with these men to fight the war, to end all wars. And in this conquest, she discovers her full power and to true destiny, according to the storyline. $822 million at the box office because the world wants to create superheroes. I want to minister tonight on Deborah, God's true Wonder Woman. Judges 4, <laughs> verse number 4. I saw uh, three women dressed up like Wonder Woman. We had to tell them to go home and get some clothes on. But anyway, no, I'm messing with you. <laughs> but anyway, Judges 4, verse number 4. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidoth, was judging Israel at that time, and she would sit under a palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Ben-Noam, from Kadesh and Nabala, said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor. Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Nabala and of the sons of Zebulun. And against you I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude at the river of Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. If you will not go with me, then I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah rose and went with Barak, and Barak called, and the list goes on and on. Let's pray. Father, we come tonight by the blood. God, we pray, give us a revelation of this woman, God, her character. God, give us understanding of the qualifications to become God's wonder woman. God, pour out your spirit, I pray, save the lost. God, raise up men and women in this generation that you can use to deliver a nation in Jesus' name. Amen. To be God's wonder woman, the first qualification, you have to be a woman of God. The first words about this woman reflect a spiritual dimension. She has a spiritual portfolio. It doesn't mention her beauty. Not once. It never mentions if she's attractive, her hairstyle, her makeup, her lipstick. It doesn't mention her clothes, her style of dress, or her figure. 
It doesn't mention or portray some supernatural, like the movie Wonder Woman, strength, or some incredible talent. It doesn't say she's sexy. God's Wonder Woman is not about flesh, but about spirit. Think of the first words attached to this woman's name. Now, Deborah, a prophetess, a wife, Lepidoth, was judging Israel. This word prophetess, she's one who hears the voice of God. She's one who seeks God. She has such a relationship with God that he fills her mind with wisdom. He gives her the ability to communicate justice, give direction, to speak insight and bring wisdom. She's the Wonder Woman for God. She reminds me of the virtuous wife in Proverbs 31. 31 1 Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. Verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Proverbs 31, 30, charm is deceitful, beauty is passing, passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. The Bible says she's a wife, her husband. Her name means the one who enlightens. The one who lights the lamp. The woman who brings splendor. The woman who makes your world shine. She's a woman who can be trusted. Her husband, some scholars feel maybe he had deceased, um, but if he's living, he allows her to go to war with Barak. Proverbs 31, 11, again, when it speaks of the virtuous wife, the heart of her husband safely trusts her. 12, she does him good and not evil all the days of his life. God's Wonder Woman has a spiritual dimension, and this is the first definition. Deborah, the prophetess. What is your first definition? When people want to identify you, or they make a comment that is linked to your personality, is it spiritual, ladies? The opposite of Deborah is also found in the book of Judges. And she is linked with Samson. Her name begins with a D as well, Delilah. But she is a totally different character. She's immoral. She's a seductress. She sells out Samson for 1,100 pieces of silver. She's ma manipulative. She lies. You know the story. She lulls him to sleep on her lap. Um, and he tells her the secret of his strength. And she has his head shaved. And then she torments him and was instrumental in seeing him blinded and etc. But Deborah is totally opposite. She's also a woman of wisdom. She has good judgment. Judges 4, 5, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Scholars say she probably judged Israel for 40 years. And Judges 5, 31, so the land had rest for 40 years. 
In other words, this woman wasn't causing conflict. Uh, uh, there was a rest, there was a peace in the land because of her words and her judgment calls. She had the ability to discern judgment and wisdom. You can see beyond the moment. You can see how this is going to play out. You can see the consequences. You can see beyond the emotion and the feelings of the moment or the instant. Judgment. You're able to speak beyond all the noise and the chatter many times when there's conflict. All the voices. People with judgment see potential where others see only problems. They see solutions where others only see bad situations. Listen to the word of God. Israel's in trouble. We've seen this. Been preaching out of the book of Judges. Judges 5, 6. The highways were deserted. And the travelers walked along the byways. Translation. The public roads were abandoned because they were unsafe. Uh, you had to sneak through the back alleys if you wanted to move from one place to another. Verse 7. Village life ceased in Israel. In other words, there was no home life. A nation in turmoil and upheaval. And then the Bible says in verse 7, Deborah arose as a mother of Israel. In other words, here's a woman. Uh, I believe God raised her up. Um, and you have to ask, what made this woman so attractive to God? That he put such wisdom in her mouth. Uh, that she's able to turn a nation. She's able to inspire this handful of an army to defeat a mighty enemy. Wisdom. Judgment. Listen to her song. Later, quite a bit of this is chapter 5 is a song that she and Barak sing. Uh, listen to her song and you get an understanding of what attracts God. Her song is filled with the name of the Lord. Judges 5.2, bless the Lord. 5.3, I even I will sing to the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. 5.5, 5, the mountains gushed before the Lord. 5.9, bless the Lord. 11, the righteous acts of the Lord. Then the people of the Lord. Verse 13, the Lord came down for me against the mighty. Verse 23, curse me, Ross, said the angel of the Lord. Verse 31, let all of your enemies perish, O Lord. But that let those who love him be like the sun when it comes out in full strength. Here's a woman, after they won a great victory, her song of praise is filled with giving glory to God. She never tried to exalt herself. There's no words of pride. Heard Pastor Mitchell over and over, especially in the latter years, talk about the fellowship. And he'd say, it's a work of God. Over and over, it's a work of the Lord. And many times he would accompany that with, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. It was all God. What's the song your life sings? Is it about the Lord? Or is it about you? You know, we all have a song. Even if you can't sing like me, you're still singing a song. People hear. People hear. 
People measure. People observe. Your life sings a song. Do you have the song of God's Wonder Woman? Or is your song more about you? Deborah not only is a spiritual woman, she's a woman of courage. She didn't just have a word from God, she had the courage to speak it. She called Barak. He's, he's a commander. He'd be like a general of their army. His name means lightning that kneels down. And you have to understand the word she gave him was not an easy word to give. It was a challenging word that in the natural looked like it would cost him his life. Judges 4, 6, has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, go, 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 disperse, disperse the troops at Mount Tabor, take with you 10,000. Now 10,000 sounds impressive until you look at the enemy. Judges 5, 8, not a shield or a spear was seen among the 40,000 of Israel. One, you don't have any weapons. And two, Sisera, verse 7, and against you with his chariots and his multitude. Judges 4, 13, so Sisera gathered together all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron. And all the people. So he has a multitude. He has 900 chariots. It'd be like tanks. And you don't even have a pocket knife. You're outnumbered and you're outgunned. And yet, this woman says, Listen, listen, I got a word for you. And you get the understanding. She gives him this word. And he says, okay, okay, Wonder Woman. Only way I'm going to go is if you go with me. <laughs> but I, I want to give a shout out to Barak right here. He was able to accept and receive some advice from a woman. Are you able to receive some direction? Some men are so proud and so insecure, they have to slap down any ideas that are not their own. Any advice, any direction, any input, they immediately have to discredit one of the marks of a good leader is you're able to receive advice and ideas from others. He could have very, what a woman, get back under your palm tree. What do you know about war? Go back where you belong. You're a prophetess. Men, can anyone give you advice? Can anyone make a suggestion? Especially a woman. Amen. Amen, Pastor Campbell. Just keep preaching. <laughs> Especially your wife. Or someone in the church. Can anybody? What, what was it, Campbell 2020? Can anybody talk to you when you're locked in on crazy? <laughs> David, one of them, remember I preached that old sermon on Abigail. It's amazing. She talked him off of the edge. Deborah had courage to be honest. She said, I'll go with you. But I want you to understand something, Barak. Verse 9, she said, I'll surely go with you, 
Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey. In the journey you're taking, for the Lord will sell Syria into the hands of a woman. Then Deborah rose and went with Badrach to Kadesh. Isn't that interesting? She said, I'll go with you, but, but you need to understand something. If I go, you're not going to get the, they're going to, all of Israel is going to say, we won the battle because of a woman, because of me. Can you live with that, Barak? They're going to say, I led the troops. They're going to give me the credit and the glory. That's cold, <laughs> honest courage. I understand my place, she's saying. I don't want problems down the road. I'm a prophetess. I'm not a general. But you need to understand something here. She's not mocking. She's not belittling this man. She's honest. And later when they sang the song of victory, it was really about Deborah. Chapter 5, verse 7, Until I, Deborah, arose, a mother of Israel. Verse 12, Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, sing a song. Arise, Barak. Get up and lead. The Bible says the princes of Essachar were with Deborah. Verse 15, This is God's wonder woman. She's spiritual. And she has courage in kingdom business. Is that you, ladies? Any? She spent time with God because God could speak and give her wisdom and use her voice. She's such an inspiration to Barak and the nation. She's a patriot. She defends her country. She fights for her country, her family, her God, today her church. She has a word of encouragement for Barak. Judges 4.14, then Deborah said to Barak, Up, this is the day in which the Lord has delivered Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him, and the Lord routed Sisera and his chariots and all of his army. Ladies, do you have a word of encouragement lift them up. <coughs> for your husband? For men, in a critical moment, men, no doubt, your greatest asset apart from God is your wife. As I mentioned, she's not trying to take his place. He said, God has delivered this day the enemy into your hand. Not my hand, but your hand. Proverbs 31, 23, her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Ladies, how you relate to your husband, how you view him, how you respond to him, either discredits him or gives credit to him. She said her husband is known when he sits in the gates. She contributed to his honor and his position. Deborah is there in critical times. 
She's there in defining moments. You read her story, and she's not all over the place emotionally. She's not blaming. She's not complaining. You never hear one word like that out of this woman. It's staggering. It's your time, Barak. This is your day. Go for it. I can remember Connie, my wife, over the years. Some of you, Mounds, Illinois. I, you know, it's hard to relate stuff. It's 1,700 people. We're going to live in the Sunday school rooms. We don't know it at the time for a year and a half. Up, up, Campbell, up, let's go. <laughs> Not one hesitation. Came to Chandler, our daughter had just recently died. Malaysia. Always an encouragement. Are you a wonder woman for God? Let me close. One of the marks of a wonder woman, she inspires other women to do something for God. She inspires courage and the best in other women. I believe she inspires other women to worship God, to serve God, to do the right thing, to do something for God, to be in prayer, outreach, to serve, to be faithful to your husband. No record Deborah was ever immoral or unclean. Wonder women inspire other women to do what's right. Here enters the story of an interesting woman. Jael, J-A-E-L. Actually, our daughter, Jael, this is where we got her name from this woman. We didn't want to name her Jail. We thought about it, but it sounds so much like J-A-I-L. We thought she'll be mocked all through school and who knows what will happen. So we, we made up a name, j -Rell. My wife made it up. So here is Barak. They're overrunning the enemies. The general, Sisera, he's fleeing for his life. He's on foot. And he's come to the tent of Jail, the wife of Heber. He's exhausted. And he reaches her tent and he says, if you, if you got anything to drink? She says, come on in. You come in the tent. I'll cover you up. He says, well, when, when the enemy comes, tell them no one's here. Watch this woman. Her name means the woman who goes up and excels. Now, <laughs> I'm not sure you'd want to marry this woman, but anyway, let, let's listen to the rest of the story. Judges 4.21, then Jael, Heber's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went in softly to him, drew the tent peg, drove the tent peg into his temple until it went through his head into the ground and he died. She nailed him to the earth. <laughs> Talk about getting nailed, man. Yeah, this, this guy got nailed bad. <laughs> and uh, in other words, I wonder though, I wonder, did Deborah inspire, if Deborah can go to war and do something for God, I can do something for God. Right. I mean, imagine if he had awoken and you're there with a hammer and a tent peg. <laughs> imagine that. Imagine the turmoil. I mean, he, I'm not sure how quick he went to sleep but, or how long she waited, but can you imagine? She went in softly. She knows this is dangerous turf. And yet something in her, the courage. And when you read the song, you can read it for yourself later. She takes up four or five verses of the song that was sang in Israel. 
But again, I wonder, listen, ladies, when you go for God, it encourages other women to go for God. If Deborah can be a patriot, I can be a patriot. The question, do you inspire other women to step out for God? To be a testimony for God. Righteousness. Listen, if you do, you're God's wonder woman. Wonder women in God make other women stronger. Stronger. Judges 4.24 And the hand of the children of Israel grew stronger and stronger against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Want to be God's wonder woman? You can. You can. Proverbs 31, 28, her children rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also praises her. 29, many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. It's a powerful woman. She's so stable. Think of this, the nation's at war. You, you've read, judges, we preached about getting, they're being plundered, they're being overrun, there's upheaval. The highways aren't safe, the home life is horrible. And yet, this Wonder Woman for God, you read her story and her wisdom and her stability. She stabilized Barak and an army probably. That's powerful. Are you a stabilizing influence in your sphere of life? As a mother, as a wife, as a woman of God, maybe a pastor's wife, maybe your husband's in ministry, who, who, who knows? Maybe you're in ministry here. A lot of wonderful women here that serve. Had people visit Back some time ago, my granddaughter's 16th birthday, and there were people visiting from other fellowship churches, and the next day was Cinco de Maya, and they were amazed at all these women serving. They're, they're staggered. And this pastor's wife said to me, where I'm at, you can't hardly get these women to do, I have to do everything myself. And I thought, what a wonderful, what a powerful testimony. There's a lot of wonder women in this place. Over the years, your stability, your testimony, your language, your example has held many men stable. You need to understand that. Some of you, single mothers, you're, you're holding your children and grandchildren because your husband's unsaved or God's wonder woman. I ask you to bow your head with me this evening. Lord, we thank you tonight. You're here. And you're not saved. Uh, Spirituality begins at salvation. That's where it begins. God, I'm sorry. I need to be saved. Forgive me. It's a miracle. It's amazing when you surrender your life. One, what God will do through you. And the influence he can give you. And the person he can create. Your old life, nothing like your new life. Let me ask you, what kind of wife are you? Listen to me for just a moment. What kind of mother? What kind of Christian? Are you born again? Anyone here this evening? You'd say, Pastor, I'm not saved. I'm not right with God. 
lost, I need Jesus, you'd lift your hand. Want to pray with you? Want to pray with you? You'd lift your hand. That's me. That's me. That's me. Backslider. That's me. That's me. That's me. You'd lift your hand. Anyone at all. No distractions. Say you're lost. Not right with God. Anyone? Okay, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. I want you to stand to your feet. I want to open these altars. God is dealing with you. Ladies, God is dealing with you. Men. Can your wife speak to you? Can any can you anybody with a different idea? Do you have to immediately discredit it? Your wife has a suggestion or an idea. And you have to immediately slap it down. Are you a wonder woman for God? Wonder Woman for God. Wonder Woman. If you're at your seat, you may be seated. Let's pray. Let's talk to God. Uh, let's cry out to God in this place. Uh, oh, Ramashama, give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I wait. God, I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Are you a wonder woman for God? Are you a wonder woman for God? Do you respect the house of God? Do you respect God and what He wants to do and is doing? Are you sensitive to God? I want to pray for all the women. I'm going to ask you to just take a step back. If you're a lady here, you want prayer, I want you to come and stand. I want to believe God for you. I want to believe God for you. You live in a difficult time. You live in a time with a lot of pressure, a lot of assault, a lot of demonic strategy against you. Difficult time. Difficult time. Need God. Need God to help you. Need God to help you. Need God to help you. And He will help you. This woman, it's amazing when you read her story. Amazing when you read her story. Amazing when you read her story. And that can be your story. That can be your story. That can be your story. Just got to get close to God. Listen for His voice. Spend time with Him. Tuesdays, we're going to start prayer and fasting. I encourage you to pray and fast. Be in the house of God, praying, 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 laying hold of God. Amen. I'm going to ask you all to stretch your hands toward these women. You can lift your hands as well. I want to ask you to pray with me. I want to believe God. I want to pray. God, Father, by the blood, by the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, I pray come down, God, upon these women. I pray your anointing. <coughs> 
Pour out your spirit, O God. Oh, Ramama Shandalava Rebo Shikaya. God, breathe, I pray. Give them wisdom, God. Give them understanding. God, give them words of encouragement, uh, words of direction and revelation in their influence. Oh, for out your spirit, God, Holy Ghost of God, fall upon these women. Would you give him praise? Oh, God, Oh, Wait on God a moment. In this night, my daughter's, why would you weep? Why would you cry? Why would you fear? For I have not loved you even as my own, saith God. For I have inclined my ear even to your words, to your times and prayers you sought my face. And I will move on your behalf for those that you love. Even as you lift your voice to me, I want you to know that I hear every request. And I know even the very desires of your heart. Say it for Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Encourage you. Encourage you. Amen. 2021. Believe God. Let's believe God. Believe God your prayers will be answered this year. What you've been praying for, maybe some of you for a long time, maybe your believe your prayers will be answered. Amen. We've got a lot of wonderful women in this place. I mean, look, look at this. A lot of wonderful, fantastic women. Wonderful women. Fought the battles. Been faithful, some of you, for years, decades. Faithful. Served and served and served. And give and give of yourself and your life. God is... Not ignorant of that. God is well aware of it. Maybe He rewards you back a hundred thousand fold. Yes. Amen. Let's give God one more praise. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. We thank and praise you. Remember all the uh, 